Why do we say that three meals per day is just what's naturally normal for us? Why do we say that three meals per day is what is healthy? Why do we say that three meals per day is the gold standard still when it comes down to weight loss? Like, why are we bound to this three meals per day? Is it because it's historically accurate? Because as long as we can remember, we've had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'd like to think that maybe we've evolved and we're a little bit smarter than that now and we can understand things, but we still are locked into these particular comforts. We are locked into like this breakfast, this lunch, this dinner comfort because it's what feels normal to us. Where in other realms of life, we're advancing and we're moving forward and we're abandoning what we saw as being historically accurate 200, 300, 500,000 years ago because we're smarter, more intellectual people now, but not when it comes down to things that make us comfortable. When it comes down to things that make us comfortable, we just wanna hold on to those because that would be hard to let go of. And there's some research that kind of backs up that three meals per day is good. So maybe we just, just leave that be, right? Well, let's break it down because there's some interesting stuff. I put a link down below for 30% off of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. I don't really recommend probiotics very often, but Seed has a very, very interesting one. And that's a 30% off discount link. So they have a capsule inside of a capsule. So it has a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. So if you're trying to really make a dent in your gut microbiome and make a serious change, that's probably the only probiotic I would ever recommend. So again, that link down below will get your hands on that for a 30% off discount, and then you can try taking it every day. So because it's a symbiotic, that means that it has like a multi-stage delivery system. So it has a prebiotic that breaks down, which is going to help feed the gut bacteria and help feed the probiotic, which breaks down a little bit later in digestion with their dual capsule technology. So anyhow, that link is down below for 30% off with seed. So I think a lot of this whole like reinforcement of three meals per day came from the British Journal of Nutrition. And it was a relatively decent sized study. It was like just under 2,000, it was like 1,999 people. And it determined that, okay, well, based upon epidemiological data, if someone is eating less than three meals per day, they have a higher risk of central adiposity, meaning belly fat, stomach fat. Interestingly enough, if you look at this data, it was only really in men. It wasn't correlation, uh, correlated with women. But there's some other really big pieces here. They basically found that if you ate three meals or more, you would have a better BMI, less central adiposity. People take that to the bank and they said, three meals, okay, just gonna reinforce this three meals. Forgetting about all these other things that we know about today, right? We know that protein synthesis stays elevated for a long time after a workout. We know that you don't need to constantly be eating to maintain muscle mass. We know a lot of things. But what this study really, really messed up on is they also saw that people that ate less than three meals per day in this particular study were also more likely to be smokers. They were more likely to be inactive and they were more likely to be heavy drinkers. So does that mean that eating less meals makes you drink more alcohol or eating less meals makes you less active? I don't think so. I think that is that weird correlation where we say, huh, maybe it's the fact that these people are also making very unhealthy choices. They're inactive, they're smoking, they're drinking, and maybe that's why they have more central adiposity, not because they're eating one or two meals instead of three meals. Now, there's another interesting thing that's called reverse causation, which has been really popping up a lot recently with some of these studies because now we're more aware of it and more people have access to PubMed and just can see this stuff for themselves. But have you ever thought that in a study like this, it's a snapshot in time where they just looked at a bunch of epidemiological data and they said, okay, well, men that eat one or two meals per day are more fat. Have you ever thought that maybe the fat people were trying to lose weight, so we're only eating one or two meals per day, and that's why they're eating one or two meals per day, because they were already overweight, or because they had so much leptin resistance that maybe they just didn't have that much of an appetite, and things were really cattywampus because they're totally metabolically deranged. Has that ever occurred? So interestingly enough, then we look at a study that was published in the journal Nutrition. In the journal Nutrition, this was a bigger study of over 50,000 people. And in this particular study, they found that those that ate less meals, less than three meals, typically had lower BMI. And those that ate three or more ended up having more BMI, higher BMI, the more that they ate. They also found, believe it or not, that the longer the overnight fast, 
the less the BMI. Doesn't mean that fasting is magic, but it does mean that maybe if they like fasted a little bit longer overnight, they ended up eating less or they had a longer fast. So they only ended up eating one or two meals because, hey, that's crazy. Maybe that's all they had time for, right? It's not like they're just trying to just eat one or two meals per day. And then when we go back to this original study, the three meals per day is gold standard study. By the way, that was all self-reported. So I don't know about you, but I'm really good at what I do with my food. Like I'm pretty, it's what I do for a living now. It wasn't always that way, but even I am still a little messed up when it comes down to properly tracking. And if you asked me to retroactively tell you what I ate or how many times I ate over the last like five days, I couldn't tell you unless I was actively writing down and I could reference my worksheets. I, can, I can't tell you how many meals I had last Friday. This is not gonna work. So trusting regular people that are not in the health and wellness industry to do that is, is nuts, that's ludicrous. Now there's another study that was interesting though, because this particular study took people that were snackers versus non-snackers. Snackers ate roughly six meals per day, non-snackers ate three meals per day, okay? What they had them do is they had them switch. They had the snackers eat three meals per day and not snack, and they had the non-snackers eat six meals per day and snack. What they found is that the non-snackers, when they went to the snacking group, actually ended up consuming less. Now, why is that? That kind of makes it sound like we should be eating more. What it probably means is that by eating less meals and not snacking, they're probably accustomed to having uh, more hunger hormones kind of suppressed or hunger hormones suppressed and PYY and gut incretins increased. So their desire to eat just wasn't there as much. But here's the real kicker. When they went into the snacking group from a non-snacking group, the amount of carbohydrates they consumed was significantly less. Now I'm not gonna get on my low carb high horse here. That's not the point. But my point in saying this is that what we eat matters. Okay, so if you take someone that is a non-snacker and put them as a snacker, but they eat less carbs, who knows? They might lose weight because they might end up eating less. They might have less insulin stimulating their appetite. Who knows, right? All kinds of different variables that we don't need to pay attention to today. The thing is, is that what we eat matters. So if you eat three square meals per day of full, wholesome, down-to-earth food, and I eat three square meals of hyperpalatable BS, is it safe to say that we're gonna end up looking the same, feeling the same, having the same fat distribution, having the same HbA1c, having the same insulin, insulin resistance? I don't think so. I think we know enough about somewhat individual responses to food and somewhat hyperpalatable processed garbage being bad that that's probably not gonna end up in the same in place. So to say that eating three square meals per day is a blanket good thing for what, eight billion people on the planet is flat out irresponsible.